But you're not going to learn how to coach a team. You're not going to learn how to take a training session. To do that, you've got to do a training badge, and that's that's actually something that we want to get involved with um, later in the year. Uh, we actually want to be encouraging people to do coaching badges. There's talk at the moment of me going off and doing one with a few journals to try and get more people up doing them, which would be fantastic because I'd love to do them. A couple of people here have, have done their have done their badges, and one of those guys now is assistant manager of QPR ladies reserve team as well off the back of his coaching qualification so he gets he gets time off to go and do that but it, it would stand you in good stead and certainly people inside the game believe it does there was um, a Poland manager a few years ago when we were making the previous brand rather than making football manager um, was asked in an interview what the best way was to learn how to become a manager and he mentioned that game you know we were very very proud of that because we'd never done any PR with this guy it wasn't as if he was being paid to say it this was a genuine question that he got asked and and we don't un, unlike a lot of the other football brands in in gaming we don't employ managers or players to go around talking about the game we have players who help us beta test the game and we never talk about it because we don't we'd never say who they are because we don't have commercial deals with them we have an international manager who beat to test the game. Uh, again, we won't ever say his name because we don't have a commercial deal. We want uh, we want the simulation to speak for itself and let the users speak for it rather than um, rather than doing the standard plonk footballer in front of camera and get him to say how great he thinks the game is. The the ironic thing with that is that um, the first time Wayne Rooney was involved with FIFA. He was asked what games he plays. And he went, oh, love Football Manager. And that, that was just brilliant. You're sitting there at a FIFA press conference um, for the new EA game and talking about um, our game instead. The reason why the guy who applied for the job at Middlesbrough, the reason why that resonated so well with so many people is because he got a response. And the response from Steve Gibson was magnificent. I mean, what a great sense of humour. Just absolute genius, that response. Um, my favourite one actually wasn't the, the Steve Gibson one, the Middlesbrough one. My favourite one was when a kid, a 12-year-old boy, applied for a job at um, Wolves in his application. I play football manager, I'm really, really good at it. And then puts at the bottom of his application, P.S. My mum said that she's happy to wash the kit. Just genius absolute genius you know it's it's just what wolves need to take on a manager because the mum's got a big bag of purse at home um but yeah, i mean you know things like that are, are great um all of that stuff is just driven by our community and the people who play the games to do and we find about find out about it afterwards and it's it's fantastic that you know that a, a computer simulation drives people to really want to apply for the jobs whether whether they're joking or not um i'm sure some of them are serious about it and it will happen someday after speaking to miles it was clear that the developers share the fans passion for the game and that football manager was increasingly becoming part of real world football dave and i were hopeful we'd get some success however later that week we got some disappointing news um just had a text from Dave updating about um, some of the jobs he's applied for um, unfortunately the uh, the Plymouth job we were looking at has already gone, uh, Peter Reid just got that the other day um, he also said something off to uh, Notts County uh, turns out Craig Short Craig Short got that quite a while ago so to check that out a bit better next time but Liverpool's looking like Roy Hodgson obviously that was probably never going to happen anyway but it's worth a punt. Um, and it sounds like they're lining up Sven Goran Eriksson as their replacement. So um, we're struggling a bit at the moment. But um, Kilmarnock have also just appointed somebody new. I read that this morning. So um, and Hull, I read, were on the brink of an out making an announcement. But hopefully that's an announcement with someone who um, is already um, at a club and then. That way, another opening will, will turn up, um, and we'll see where it goes from there. But 
it's not been not been a great day on the job front so far today, but uh, we'll keep going to see what uh, what we can get. With those jobs gone, I went to Glasgow, to Firhill Stadium, home of Partick Thistle Football Club, to speak to somebody else who tried their hand at management. My name is James McGee, and I applied for the Carlow United manager's job using Football Manager as my experience on my CV. I got a letter back from the executive manager of Carlow United. Uh, they'd put a caretaker manager in place, and they felt it best to go with him. They gave him the permanent job. They wished me all the best for the future, getting into football management. Years later, that manager gets sacked. Still, still thinking, if I was there, I'd be in the job. I maybe will try again. I think Commonwealth United are looking for a new manager. I'm maybe thinking about going for them. It's a local club, it's two minutes from my house. I sort of know some of the players already, so it could be a go. But I'd maybe go sort of lower league than Carlisle. Carlisle were, what, I think it was League Two they were in at the time. Maybe go even lower than that. It's more chance they're going to take on a complete unknown. I think it's maybe unrealistic to maybe go for like the Man United job whatever, when Sir Alex retires. I think maybe, I don't know, box or motors. <laughs> maybe take me on. Like, lower league clubs definitely would maybe see you've got an interest in football. You maybe have some sense from playing these games. So I don't, maybe one time somebody will risk it. Uh, well, I know there's been a f- several people who so apply for managers' jobs uh, using football managers' experience. No one's been successful yet. One day we'll get through. But there is a sort of quite a deal. Uh, a sort of sense of realism with football manager. I find a lot of clubs sort of in the, in the game move for a certain player, buy the player, then to find a couple of months down the line, clubs are buying that player. So I'm not sure if maybe football managers influenced the manager there or not. You sort of have to learn sort of the ins and outs, basically running a football club with the game. So you do appreciate the level how much work the manager actually has to do. So you're obviously you're searching constantly for players to try and find the right one and get the right price. And that's sort of scenes you don't really see, just as a fan. Basically you see a player coming in, press release, this player's signing for this much money. There's so much behind the work scenes that you do, sort of get a taste of from football manager. My friend first got champ manager two and said, you have to come play this. And I went round to his house, played it, and instantly I was hooked. Later on, just every weekend I go to his and spend most of my Saturday just sitting playing football manager. Uh, listening to the football on the radio at the same time, so I wasn't missing important games. Maybe here if a player I could maybe sign I was doing well in the law on the radio in the real matches. I like to keep things for myself. It's quite a competitive edge when we play matches, so if I know a certain little player, it's quite good, it's quite cheap. I always try and sign him, but I wouldn't tell any of my friends just in case it does come round to like a group match where everyone's trying to sign that one player because I've told them about it. So I think maybe like a real life manager you keep these things sort of under the table. One good example for me is Lucas Podolski. He's one I signed uh, many seasons ago, just as a promising youngster. And now he's doing well in the, this current World Cup for the Germany squad. Most points probably losing the match. Uh, not so much the match, but losing that entire game. I had a problem with computer and maybe my favourite game of all time was I was with Southampton. It was a game where sort of randomly started and I was doing moderately well. I'd, I'd maybe spent a good six months just playing this game solidly, only for my computer to break and sort of, that was it. Computer gone, game gone, it was, that was probably the saddest moment of my career. The fact I couldn't take it off because I was doing quite well with Southampton and the fact I could never recapture that glory. Uh, perhaps win the Champions League with Celtic using Scottish only players. It was a challenge I set myself and I done it in two seasons which really shocked me because the quality of Scottish players isn't great. It did cost me a lot of money because SPL clubs obviously bump up the money for all SPL clubs. Uh, but yeah, Champions League with Celtic also won the league that year. It's probably my proudest moment. There's just something in there. It gets you addicted. Uh, my friend, uh, he was trying to quit smoking. He found Football Manager. He was addicted to that. He placed the addiction. He found where he was smoking. He was sitting playing Football Manager for a couple of hours and not touching a cigarette because his fingers were too busy doing other things. So he basically just locked himself in the room for 40 hours, played Football Manager, substituted the addiction. I really don't know what it is. It's, I would say it's a computer game experience, but I don't play any other computer games. I'm not addicted to playing the computer. It's just Football Manager. On my return from Glasgow, there was more news. 
Um, just had an email from Dave saying he's had a response to one of the jobs he's applied for, so that's excellent news. Um, and it's quite a positive one as well. Uh, it's from Edry United, uh, Scottish, I think, Division 2 side. I'm not sure. Sorry if you're not Edry and your fans. Um, but it's come from the chairman as well, which is even better. It's not just been fobbed, fobbed off or anything. Um, it says, Dear Mr Murphy, many thanks for your email and impressive CV. In order to progress matters, we've tried to track down Super Mario, but he's so far been unwilling to give you a reference. Therefore, alas, we can take matters no further. Regards, Jim Ballantyne, Chairman of Airdrie United Football Club. Real world. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not quite what we were hoping for in terms of a job, but, you know, it's um, <laughs> it's made us smile. So thank you for that, Airdrie and Mr Ballantyne. Jim Ballantyne's response wasn't quite what we'd hoped for, but it gave us a lift. It showed the sense of humour that many play the game with, mocking our own dreams, almost being embarrassed or guilty for daring to imagine we could manage a team. It's something that, in my experience at least, was a common theme in the football manager community.